I say this type of thing so much it's almost becoming a cliche at this point, but Sunshine Airport 150cc was a really interesting course to put a run together for. I've been watching Alberto and Kai go back and forth taking the record from each other over the past few weeks in preparation for this video, and one thing that struck me was just how simple this course looks. On its face, there's nothing about the course that's obviously difficult, but before running the track, I suspected that there was more to Sunshine Airport than meets the eye, and after talking with Alberto, my suspicions were confirmed. Oh yeah, did I mention that I actually got help from the man, the myth, the legend himself? Welcome to part 9 of Basic Training, where we're going to cover everything you need to know about Sunshine Airport on 150cc. As always, we're going to cover the recommended builds, mushroom strats, coin lines, and other advanced tips and tricks to help you start mastering the course. We're also going to cover alternate strategies that you can use in place of some of the more complicated parts of the track, as well as shroomless strategies which are going to be more generally applicable to online races. Before we get started, just wanted to give a massive shout out to Alberto for helping me out with this video. I spent a couple of hours talking to him about this course and asking about the strategies used by top level runners. His advice and tips greatly improved the quality of my runs, and I'm really excited to share what I learned with you today. Like with the Shy Guy Falls video, anytime I come to a strat where I got some input from him, I'm going to put a little notification on the screen that looks like this. And finally, since you can't be a successful YouTuber without making a plea to appease the algorithmic overlords, if you find this type of content useful or entertaining, don't forget to drop a like and a comment to let me know. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with my latest videos since I upload a new video every week. With all that out of the way, let's pack our bags and head to Sunshine Airport. There are actually a few viable builds you can use for this course. The world record build, which is the build that I'm going to recommend for you, is our usual tryhard build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Rollers, and Paper Glider with a ground speed of 3 and a mini turbo of 4.75. You can also swap out Bitty Buggy for Wiggler if you don't plan on taking full advantage of the mini turbo strats that we're about to go over. Previous world records use Dry Bowser, Wiggler, Rollers, and Plane Glider, which prioritizes speed much more than mini turbo. I really don't recommend messing with this build though since after a couple hours of testing, I found that I was able to consistently get better times with the Waluigi build even when I used the exact same strategies. So that's it for the builds, let's check out the track. The entire first half of the track is kind of a nightmare to be honest. It all starts after you get the startup boost. What you want to do is quickly get over to the right hand side of the track so that you can approach the first left hand turn from the outside. This will allow you to take a really tight line around the first turn. Then, after tricking off the ramp between the second and third arrows from the left, you want to build up a mini turbo before doing a right alignment hop and tricking off the first conveyor belt. One thing that's really important to point out is that the direction of the trick matters here. I'm not really sure why this is the case, but on some of the ramps in the game, it's actually faster to trick in the direction of your drift. So what that means here is that you want to do a left trick off this first ramp. That's not really so bad, but the problem comes in when we want to build up the first mini turbo before the conveyor belt. Without a good setup, one of three things is likely to happen. First, is that you'll take too tight of a line around the first turn and bonk into the wall before you even get to the conveyor belt. This doesn't happen too often though, and if you manage to avoid doing this, then what you're much more likely to encounter is a situation where your right alignment hop doesn't straighten you out enough, in which case you'll end up bonking into the wall after the conveyor belt. The third thing that can happen if you don't have a good setup is that you don't build up the mini turbo in time. This can either cause you just to miss the mini turbo completely, or else result in a situation where your alignment hop carries you over the conveyor belt instead of letting you trick off of it. There's actually a pretty simple setup to execute these strats consistently. The way that I do it is right before tricking off the first ramp, I hold right slightly on the joystick to widen my drift angle a little bit. This gives me some room upon landing to build up the mini turbo. And then, as I'm tricking, I quickly hold left so that I do the left trick. And then immediately after the trick animation starts, I put my joystick in neutral so that my cart doesn't angle too much to the left. Then when you land, you should have more than enough room to build up the mini turbo. And then after that, it's just the right alignment hop and trick like we talked about before. The next thing you're going to want to do is grab the left coin in the first row and the middle coin in between the tires in the second row. And now we come to the second nightmarish part of the course. It only makes up about 6 seconds or so of the lap, but there's so much going on here that this 6 seconds killed about 90% of my runs. Let's walk through this quickly first, and then I'll break down each piece in detail. So after grabbing the first two coins, we try and get a low trick off the orange ramp. Hug the left side of the platform as tightly as possible to build up a super mini turbo and then drift off the platform to the right of the orange boost ramp. 
Then use a mushroom through the grass while avoiding the fence on the right hand side. Build up a super mini turbo, release, and immediately start a left drift around the back part of the plane. Now each of these pieces individually is a pretty huge pain in the ass to execute properly, so let's talk about them individually for a bit. First up, we have the low trick off the orange ramp. Frankly, I'm just not experienced enough with the game to explain properly why all this stuff works the way it does, but suffice it to say that how you approach a ramp and when you trick off it actually impacts how much height you get off the ramp. We want to try and get as low of a trick as possible so that we can land on the platform as early as possible. This is because if we get too much airtime, well, airtime is just generally slow, so we want to minimize airtime as much as we can. But also, if we get too much airtime, we'll end up being forced to take a really wide line around the bend, and we don't want that. So how do you actually get a low trick off of a boost ramp? Well, there's two pieces to this. First of all, notice this little drift I do before tricking off the ramp? This is called a slide, which is basically just a drift without getting a mini turbo. And most of the time, it's used for more precise realignment purposes. But here, it's also used to help you get the low trick. The other component of the low trick is where you trick off the ramp. It's a pretty weird timing because you don't want to trick too late because then you'll get a lot of air. But oddly and frustratingly enough, if you trick too early, you'll also get a lot of air. So what you basically want to do is delay the trick until just after you hit the boost ramp. So to recap, the basic strategy is slide plus a slightly delayed trick equals low trick. It's actually quite a bit more complicated than that because not only can you just miss the low trick which gives you a high trick, but even if you get the low trick, you can get a high low trick or a low low trick. In general, it's just a really complicated strategy, so really just do the best you can. Now regardless of whether or not you actually got the low trick, the next step is drifting off the platform to the right of the orange boost ramp. The way to do this properly is after going off the first orange boost ramp, keep holding down the drift button and left on the joystick so that when you land you'll immediately start a drift. Hold as tight of a line as possible and build up a super mini turbo. Then immediately release and do a single right hop followed by a right drift. That first hop is really for realignment purposes because it'll help you get a better line when going through the shortcut after coming off the platform. Now two more things to point out here. You want to avoid the orange boost ramp because, like I mentioned before, the less time you spend in the air, the better. And you want to drift off the ramp instead of tricking because this helps you keep a tighter line around the upcoming mushroom shortcut. Now after coming off the platform, you want to keep holding your drift and hold a hard right on the joystick. This serves two purposes. The first is that you can still build up levels of mini turbo in midair, and so if you're holding a hard right drift angle, you can actually build up a super mini turbo much more quickly. The second is to get you close to the fence so that you can cut as much of the grass as possible. The thing about this shortcut is that the mushroom just barely gives you enough boost to carry you all the way through the grass, so you want to delay using your mushroom until just before you get onto the grass. And as soon as you use your mushroom, start holding a hard left on the joystick. This should allow you to avoid bonking into the fence at the end of the shortcut. I say should, but let me tell you, once I figured out the rest of the strats in this track, this one fu piece of track ruined basically all of my runs. If you bonk into the fence here, it's basically game over and you're gonna lose a shit of time and you might as well just restart. All that being said though, there's really not that much to the shortcut beyond what I already explained. It's just a drift off the platform, hold right, use the mushroom and immediately hold left, and don't forget to pray. Once you make it out of the cut, you're more or less done with all the really complicated stuff in the track. Unless you're going for world record strats, that is. After coming out of the cut, you should have a super mini turbo, so just release as soon as you can and start a left drift while grabbing the coin that's in between the fence and the platform. Now with this first drift, you want to try and align yourself such that when you get the mini turbo, you can grab the two coins around the bend here. As soon as you get the mini turbo, release, do a right hop for alignment purposes, and then do another left drift to grab the coins. Build up a second mini turbo, release, right hop, and grab the next two coins before the glider. Okay, so I actually lied a little bit when I said that we were out of the woods. This glider is a cannon glider, and if you watch my advanced strats video, you know what that means. It's fast glider time. This is actually one of the easier fast gliders in the game, and all you have to do is just hop a little before you get to it so that you land on top of the glider ramp. Like the name fast glider implies, this will cause your glider to come out more quickly, which will cause you to get up to cannon speed more quickly saving about a tenth of a second each lap. When you do the fast glider, make sure to do a left hop instead of a neutral hop, since this will allow you to get a better line on the upcoming aerial platform here. 
While in midair, start holding down the drift button so that when you land you can immediately start drifting. And then when you get the mini turbo, release and start another drift. The upcoming glider needs to be taken similarly to how we did the water park glider. This is what I called glider mini turbos, but you might also hear the term glider vectoring. All this means is that instead of tricking off the glider ramp, you want to drift off of the right side of it and then let your mini turbo get released automatically. Then, if you think of your joystick like a clock face, hold about a 7 or an 8, and that will cause you to get a significant increase in forward momentum over just going straight off the ramp or tricking. Once you get to the left side of the runway, you can stop holding down the vectoring angle and just bring your joystick back to neutral. Couple of things to point out. You don't want to go too far off to the right, otherwise you won't be able to grab the coins here, and that's going to cost you a ton of time because of how the coins are laid out on this track. So what I like to do to help me get a decent angle here is just to let go of the drift button right after I come off the ramp and then hold that 7 or 8 angle on the joystick. The next thing to point out is that if you're going to be going for the glider vectoring strats, you want to do a low glider by pressing the drift button as soon as the glider comes out which again, as the name implies, will cause the glider to come out lower. If you don't do this, then the glider vectoring is almost certainly going to cause you to fly over the coins, which again is going to cost you a lot of time. Okay, so now we're out of the woods. Once you land on the runway, all you have to do is start drifting, build up a mini turbo, and trick off the last conveyor belt here. If you can get in between sets of boxes, that's really what you want to be trying to do here, but otherwise just tricking on the outside of the conveyor belt ramp is going to be good enough. Similarly to the low trick that we talked about before, doing this optimally requires that you not trick as soon as possible, but just slightly later. You also want to do an up trick, which will give you a little bit less air time here. But really, the important thing is that you just get the trick in the first place. Laps 2 and 3 play really similarly to lap 1, with the main exception being that when you come out of the airport, you want to hold the drift until you get to the conveyor belt, and then do a mini turbo and a trick at the same time. Immediately upon landing, do a right hop for alignment purposes, and the rest of the track is the same as before. So let's take a look at how all this is put together in a full run. Alright, so let's talk about some world record strategies. If you look at Kai's run, one of the first differences you'll see is that after the first conveyor belt, they build up another mini turbo immediately upon landing. You can probably tell just from watching the run, but it's really hard to do this properly. 
The only other really major difference is that in both glider sections, they actually do motion glider strats. You can tell by the fact that the cart is basically angled at 90 degrees in midair. Doing both of these motion gliders saves around 0.2 seconds per lap. Now Kai actually has an additional thing that he does where he does a super mini turbo into ultra mini turbo on the aerial platform as opposed to the mini turbo into ultra mini turbo. But according to Alberto, this is insanely difficult to do well enough that it actually saves time. So I don't really recommend spending any amount of time trying to learn that. Now let's look at some alternate strategies. For the first mini turbo and trick off the conveyor belt, unfortunately there's really no way around it. No matter what build you're using, that's the optimal way to take that turn. Now for the mushroom cut, if you're using a heavier build like the dry bowser build we talked about at the beginning of the video, then you only need to do one mini turbo instead of a mini turbo and a counter hop into another mini turbo. For the glider vectoring, it's really a lot easier to learn than it looks, so I highly suggest taking the time to try and figure it out because it's useful on a lot of courses in 150cc. But if it's really giving you a lot of problems, it's still faster just to ultra mini turbo off the ramp than it is the trick. Finally, if you're running shroomless, then you still want to do the two hops for better alignment after the first orange boost ramp, but then you're going to want to trick off the ramp before drifting around the grass. And that's everything you need to know about Sunshine Airport on 150cc. Again, massive thanks to Alberto for his pro tips on this course. I learned a lot about the course that I wouldn't otherwise have been able to figure out on my own, and it also helped me learn a lot of stuff about how the mechanics of the game work. So if you found the video useful, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.